So let us start discussing the Quick Hall algorithm. We have discussed previously that the input to the Quick Hall algorithm is a set of points. So these are the set of points we are going to consider for this uh, analysis. So it's clear from this picture that extreme points like this point and this point or this point will be the part of the convex hull. So, so quick hull algorithm uses the divide and conquer strategy. So it finds the extreme points and divides the problem into sub problems. So to begin with we find the extreme x coordinate points. So the point L and the rightmost point R will be considered. So the total space will be divided into two halves with a line joining the points L and R. After that, for every sub problem, we keep finding the extreme points. For example, for the upper half, we find the distance of every point from the line LR. Previously, we have discussed how to find the distance of a point from a straight line. And using the determinant D, we can find the extreme point of the upper half. And we know that it will be the part of the convex hull. And later we find the points in the lower half and find the maximum distance point from the line joining LR. To find if a point is in the left subset or in the right subset with respect to the line LR, we can use the determinant 2. So we will use the find side function as we discussed earlier for this purpose. So let us denote the extreme point of the upper half as H. So it's clear that the points inside the triangle LHR will not be the part of the convex hull. So now we can check the left side of the line LH and we can check the left side of the line HR for extreme points. To minimize the computation we can mark the points inside the triangle. So we repeat finding maximum distance points for every sub problem. So by this way we keep finding the extreme points for every sub problem. If we denote this point as x, then we see that there is no extreme point to the left of the line Lx. And similarly there is no other extreme point to the left of the line Xh. And similarly there is no other extreme points to the left of the line Hr. So next we process the left side of the line RL. So we find the extreme point Y and we see that there are no other extreme points to the left of the line RY and there are no other extreme points to the left of the line YL. So once all the subproblems are solved we find the convex hull points. So our convex hull points are H, X, L, Y and R. So by this way we keep solving sub problems to find the extreme points and we keep processing the points until no more points are left. So to sum up we use the x coordinate values to find the points with the lowest x coordinate and the highest x coordinate values. Then we call the convex hull function recursively for the left side of the points L R and we call the convex hull function to process the left side of the line RL. For every sub problem, we use the find side function to check if a point named point I is located to the left of line LR. So let us consider all the points are stored in an array named points. So now for the first sub problem we can use the find side function to determine the side of the points. Then we measure the distance of these points from LR and we find the maximum distance point. And after that we do recursive calls for the new sub problems. So this function will recursively call convex all left of LH 
and convex hull left of h r and we keep repeating this process to find the extreme points or the convex hull surface points so look carefully for every iteration or every sub problem we mainly perform two operations one is the find side operation and another is find distance operation and as we discussed earlier these two operations are linear time operations so for m points these operations will take big of m so let us consider the time complexity of this algorithm so let us consider tm as the runtime of convex hull on the list of m points so the recurrence relation becomes t of m1 plus t of m2 plus big of m where m1 and m2 are the points in the two sub problems so it's clear that it's similar to the recurrence relation of the quick sort algorithm and that's why this algorithm is called quick hull algorithm and now we can easily find the complexity from this recurrence relation so it depends on the subsets if the subsets are there some balance then the complexity will be big of m log m like the quick sort algorithm otherwise the worst case runtime will be big of m square thank you all